How are you doing? Hi, Irina. Good morning. Thank you so much, Luis, for taking this time to be here today uh, to be able to talk a little bit about job, HR, and work experiences and things like this. How did you choose your career path? And how did, how did this touch impact your professional life? Well, it, I chose it by accident. You know, I, early on in my career, I had a role uh, with a retailer um, in a training capacity, right? A hiring and a training capacity. And again, I had a very compassionate boss who, um, and as I've grown older, you know, each year, I think I get a little better at, at my fluency, um, um, but encouraged me to say, rather than just help us develop some of these training programs, why don't you do them? You know, and I said, yeah, I don't think I'm the guy you want me talking in front of groups, right? Uh, um, but she was wonderful. Uh, Linda Clue was her name. I still remember. She goes, no, I, I think you'd be be good at it. Just do what you need to do. And that's when I started practicing again with the early versions of, of, of uh, flip charting and PowerPointing in order to make my points, right? So I started in human resources and training and development quite early. And, and then my career began to grow. And, and I grew in human resources, um, eventually growing into an executive level, a, a, a vice presidential level, uh, with a company called Geo Logistics, which is a global air freight and ocean freight company, um, and actually got the opportunity to help start that company as the uh, HR lead. Early on, I would there was many moments of frustration. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, moments where I was either going to even do my annual appraisal with my boss, right? or um, um, do a job interview where I was interviewing somebody else, right? So I was the interviewer, but I still had anxiety, right? Because I still felt uh, punished by my stutter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Like I still felt often and still to this day, right? As good as I should be at this, frustrated by it, right? And feeling anxiety by it. And, and um, when people, uh, uh, I remember a, a manager that I worked with then said, oh, you know, it's not a big deal. You know, sometimes I stutter when I'm nervous. And I said, well, it is a big deal because I don't stutter when I'm nervous. I stutter all the time. I, I don't just, uh, uh, um, it's, it's, uh, it's not a nervousness issue. As an HR expert, how can people who who is stutter better succeed at job at job interviews and do you have any any practical tips that you could give on do's and don'ts well i think the best thing is is um avoid i think it's it's better for you as, as somebody with a fluency disorder as well as the receiver of your message right um to not have it be a surprise right because um because it, when it's a surprise is when people, uh, they, they break. If you then successfully communicate even after the shock, all that person has on their mind is, oh my God, this person stutters, right? This is never gonna work. They're never gonna be able to get this job. Um, this interview is over because it is true. It's a human resource reality that all the data that I've seen shows the decision not to hire someone um, is made in the first five minutes of an interview. Um, not just because of a fluency disorder for any reason, right? And that's why first impressions are so critical, so critical. And that's why I think it's important and I, um, and I share it with my clients and I think it's important for the interviewee to again, let the interviewer know, once again, after you already have the interview appointment, right? After you've secured it, is to say, um, we shouldn't be ashamed of who we are and what we are, but, but I encourage interviewees to reach out and say, great, I understand we're meeting Wednesday at 9 a.m. I look forward to meeting you. Um, um, I would just like you to know that I have a fluency disorder, but in no means does my fluency disorder impact my skill set or my ability um, to, to be successful and, and can't wait to meet you, 
right? Can't wait. And if it's okay, I'd like to bring um, uh, a brief presentation. I'll bring my laptop um, that, that will help me highlight some of my skills and abilities. That takes off that, that weight. And we, we both know what that weight feels like. It takes off that weight of, it's only a matter of time before this guy or girl knows that I stutter, right? And uh, so now they know, and 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 uh, uh, now they'll say, "Wow, this person has an fluency disorder." They they're so articulate though, because they sent me a great note, right? They're going to come prepared to present their skill set, and then you, I tell them, go in with um, that amazing first impression. Go in with that amazing smile, right? That great handshake, right? Go in confident, right? I get it. I say, I'm going to get emotional because I do. I was the one that wanted to sit in the back of the room. I was the one that didn't want to get called on, right? When the teacher would go around and call on everybody, right? I would, I would fake illnesses to leave the room so I didn't get called on. Turn that around in your mind and boom, right? Have that confidence level. At that first introduction, sit down, bring out your laptop or your iPad or your tablet, whatever you have, because almost everybody has these now, right? And, and I've found in those situations and people that I've recommended this technique to have come back to me and said, oh my God, it just, it was, it, it changed everything, right? And, and then when you show, and then when you're referring and you're using words on your tablet or your laptop that you're comfortable with, right? That you've practiced, that you're good with. Doesn't mean you're not gonna stutter, you are, right? But the person knows that now. <laughs> they fully expect it, right? You know, and, um, and when, it's un when it's unexpected, um, that's when I think um, we could inadvertently allow the situation to get derailed. And then when they show, here's my education, Here's my experience. But now you're still going to have to answer questions. But now you're going to answer questions in the environment where the interviewer um, by then is fully aware. I, I do believe that using, you know, making the interviewer aware, again, not before you get the interview, but after, right? Um, and using whatever tool, it doesn't have to be a PowerPoint, whatever uh, I've found for sure for me and for others that, that presenting with a tool, whether it's a a, a page that you'd flip through or a visual representation of your education or background, uh, um, you know, takes the attention from the interviewer back staring at you, waiting for you um, uh, to, to hiccup on a word and kind of puts the attention on your skills and abilities that are presented in a different way. How can we shift the focus from our like speech, from our speech impediment to confidently show that the, like show the hiring managers that we have the right skills and experience for the job? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, it, it, we, we have to be um, anything written that we do that we provide a possible employer, right? Um, has to be that much better. I think we have to uh, we have to make sure that we um, um, we um, clearly articulate our skill our, our skills and abilities, not necessarily verbally, but in written form, right? So um, um, I always recommend that um, you know a traditional CV, right? Um, you know, not to be longer, right? But certainly more succinct in a CV about um, actual demonstration of skills and abilities, right? Um, whatever those skills and abilities may be, whatever kind of role you're applying for, whether you're an engineer or whatever the case may, uh, the case may be. Um, again, I also think it's, um, the, it's important to, to showcase um, your skills and abilities other than just speaking to them. So I really think it is beneficial to prepare uh, something, right? Um, it can be, um, and I keep mentioning PowerPoint only because that's what I use, but it doesn't need to be. But even if it's something that you leave behind, right? Um, like it can be a, 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 a pad or, you know, or printed, stapled in the corners that when you, you 
flip through achievements, right? Things you were involved at university, um, the projects you've worked on successfully, right? And you, so it, it's a visual representation of some of the things that you talked about in your CV, right? And then you leave that behind when your interview is finished. You leave that with the interviewer, right? You actually give them a little thing to leave behind. That will take the focus off um, whatever degree of fluency disorder you have, and it'll put that focus back on uh, directly to your skills and achievements. What do you think we can do during a job, during a job interview when we are actually supposed to talk to make us feel right. more confident to give a firm, you know, answer and sure. to show that we feel confident enough and the, and and the, and that we know what we're talking about because if you like stutter, most likely have many, you know, hesitations and that could come really like a process if you don't know about what you're saying, if you are not sure, right. uncertainty. Oh, right. I think the goal of that, you know, hopefully by the time it gets into the Q&A se segment, right? Um, because it, it, what, I, what I'm almost suggesting is, is, um, is, uh, taking control of the pace a little bit, right? And when you go in and say, um, I've prepared something, I'd like to share it with you, right? Um, I've never had an interviewer say, no, no, I'm going to start, right? I mean, they'll, they'll likely say, oh, okay. And you're like, here's my boom, 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 boom. And then by the, again, by the time it gets to the Q&A phrase, everybody knows you're a stutterer or have some kind of fluency disorder. Um, you've laid out your your achievement skills and abilities already right hopefully in that presentation you've shared examples so now if they ask you a question and say tell me about whatever right uh, um your the mystery of your stutter is already gone right so that hopefully that gives you more confidence and then it when you do begin to answer, if you can refer back to the material that you've prepared, that's great. Because again, that eases your anxiety a bit. But if you can't, if it's something completely unrelated to the material that you've prepared, um, I do, you know, I take a deep breath. I, uh, when I do begin to stutter, right? And I don't, I miss the cue on avoiding or substituting word. I stop, I smile, right? I don't, I don't show frustration. Right. Uh, um, I stop. I smile. I, I do take a breath and pick a better word. Right. And and go into the. Uh, but I try to lay out all my achievements, all my tech, my technical ability, um, everything. So all that's already been demonstrated and shown. Right. That's my goal. Right. And it's my goal for this person to look. But the person's going to be aware that I have a stutter. Right. But. Um, how how do I make sure that I get this this uh, this knowledge across? Um, and and there's times where again you're just you're just going to stutter and it's going to happen. Accept that it's going to happen, right? Uh, um, I don't go into any of those situations going, okay. My, my goal here is to not stutter at all. Now that might be realistic for somebody like you or I. That's not realistic for other stutters that I've known and I've worked with, right? They're um, so I say then, then um, understand that and, and, and do your best to destigmatize it. You know, some, some people say, so should I put it in my CV, right? Should I put, it's, it, that's, that's part of the problem, Annie, is we, we tend to type people with disabilities by the things they can't do, right? Stutterers can't speak, blind people can't see, deaf people can't hear, that, that if, if you type yourself, if you put things, if on your CV was the five things you don't do well, would anybody ever hire you for a job, right? You'd never put, I'm awful at this, I'm awful at this, I'm awful at this. Of course not, right? You know, there's, there's um, we, we put the things on our CV or we put the things forward, the things that we do well, right? And, and, um, and again, there's so many now, especially now, so many different ways to communicate. Um, that we just have to hope that the interviewer or the HR department or uh, whatever environment that you're in 
is going to have that open mind and be acceptance again, especially when you let them know, hey, I have influency disorder. I want to come in. And I think at that point, they'll realize once you tell them or once you present your skills and background, if, you, if you're stuttering on a question, it shouldn't even enter their mind of, oh, this person is mentally disabled. This person's not able to do the job. By then, you've, you should have been able to, I think, demonstrate however you get that point across that you've certainly got the skills and abilities, right? You're just, you just communicate differently. And if I'm the key speaker, the main speaker, I find a way to interject it and let people know, not at the very beginning, but at some point that, uh, um, um, that I have, a, and I'll even say, if you hear me um a lot or pause a lot, right? Um, um, I'm promised I'm not at a loss for words. Actually, I have a ton of words, but I have a fluency disorder. I'm trying to find the right word so I can share with you what I'm thinking about. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to people who, who stutter, who are currently struggling to get hired or to get promoted at work? What could you tell them? First of all, change, change your attitude in your own mind, right? Um, move away the way you... Um, move away from thinking about yourself as, as having a deficiency or being defective, right? I really, and I know that sounds just like, you know, emotional gymnastics, but I really think it works. We can be our own worst enemy in our minds, right? So put it out of your mind, right? Uh, uh, be, be forthcoming, right? Um, go and tell your boss or your coworkers, say, look, I know you know that I have a fluency disorder. I know it, you know it, we know it, right? Um, but um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a valuable member of this team, right? And um, whereas I may not be the one that's gonna get up and, um, you know, um, uh, recite something from written word, right? Uh, uh, there's so many other ways that I could contribute. How do I do it? You have to be more, forthcoming, right? More, I, I, I advise people with fluency disorders, volunteer for everything, be on every committee, right? They want somebody on the picnic committee, be on it. They want somebody on the holiday committee, be on it, right? Be on it, right? Put yourself forward, you know, be bold, right? Uh, um, uh, those people that work with you on those committees or those environments will begin to see you for who you are, right? Will begin, will begin to accept you, right? Regardless of, of, of how you speak, right? Um, and, uh, and you'll put yourself more at ease, right? Do, n do not, if I had a table to bang, I don't, don't accept the shadows, right? Don't hide in the corner, don't do it. Right, um, you know, put yourself um, front. And it's hard. It's hard because again, there'll still be people that'll be insensitive. You know, I always say, you know, that one of those foundations of emotional intelligence. Right, you know, you can't control events. You can only control how you respond to events. Right, and if if things happen to you or things are, you know, you know, you you control how you respond to that right? Dive, you know, dive into emotional intelligence, get on emotional intelligence, see what emotional intelligence is all about. And, and how, if you're more emotionally intelligent, um, and, and, be, and become the master of your own emotions, it, um, it allows yourself to be more successful in those circumstances. But my piece of advice, uh, don't hide, don't hide from anything, right? Uh, um, just, uh, um, understand that you may have to change the way you communicate, um, some people will struggle with how at ease or not at ease they are with you. Um, and that's, and that's okay. How can I make sure that at work with my colleagues in meetings, I get heard, like people listen to me yeah. and I can yeah. say what I'm no. thinking. You know, I think it's, uh, um, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the struggles as well. You know, and and apart from being what I said before, apart being just straight out as assertive as possible, but you don't want to be so assertive of of derailing the meeting, right, or whatever the topic may be, right. Uh, um, in some in some circumstances, um, uh, 
it might be necessary to, uh, if, you, if you don't get the opportunity to share an idea or a perspective, right, for any reason, right, um, it, it always behooves us to, to, um, to follow up afterward. Don't just let it go, right, but follow up and share with the boss or the committee chair or the head of the, uh, the, head of the team that you're on and say, hey, here's what I was trying, here's the idea I was trying to get across in the meeting. Uh, and and share it uh, in written format. And what I would do if if I don't get a point across in a meeting or an idea across in a meeting, um, I wouldn't say, well, there it goes again. I just wasn't able to articulate it, right? Um, if you can raise your hand and say, hey, can we come back to this? And sometimes your boss will say, sorry, we have one hour. We have a lot to cover, so we can't come back to it. I would always follow up in written format then or go to that boss's office and say, hey, can we take 10 minutes? Because I had an idea and I wasn't able to get it across. And again, your boss knows your stutter now. So I wasn't able to get it across. I want to make sure that I'm heard. And then you have an opportunity to share it again. But don't put it on the shelf saying, I guess, I'm, I, guess I don't get to contribute. So which kind of like accommodations people who stutter can ask when they are doing um, a job, you know, a I, job interview you know, or something else? I think, especially on video environments, uh, um, it's, you can ask for, for two things, allow me to present something, right? So, you know, you can share your screen and allow me to have a presentation, which again, eases you and eases the receiver of the message you're trying to send. So um, in point two, if, you're, if point two says, um, I, I increased sales in 2019, um, 400% by, um, introducing new supply chain channels into Singapore. I don't know, right? So, and you wanna say that, but boy, do you struggle with S's in saying Singapore, right? So, but if you are allowed, even in a video environment to say, may I share my screen? I have some data I'd like to share with you. And you share that data and say, let me call your attention to point number one, right? Well, they can read Singapore. They see it there, right? But so, what if you, the video, it's actually not with someone, but it's just a question that you just have to read, you know, and answer. You well, then, don't have yeah, any then, option so to... So you're, pre, pre, you're not presenting, right? Then um, the other alternative is to ask for an accommodation and allow um, the visual texting, right? So you can see the message, right? So uh, uh, if they know you're struggling or, or you have a fluency disorder, it's like, hey, I'm gonna to try to answer all your questions, right? But if there's a particular point that I wanna make sure that I can make and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with finding the right words, would it be okay for me to um, have a visual representation of my answer uh, for everybody to see, right? Because you can, I know you can get the little, um, you know, the little text line on the bottom of your screen that you can, sometimes that's how you post questions, but you can also answer questions the same way. Um, because, so it, 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 yeah, sorry, because with like the systems, like, have you ever seen a review? Mm -mm. So you get the questions and you have like one minute, like you have 30 seconds to just read them and you have two minutes to answer. That's the latest oh, good way. Lord. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's so brutal this, for it. This yeah. is what I am actually talking about. No, no girl, that's crazy. If they have, if you have a fluency disorder, that's that have, just the idea, just the idea of that would cause anxiety, and that's why, um, that's I, I, again, communication at the beginning with the with the hiring manager or the interviewer or whoever the case may be, saying, "Hey, um, I understand that this is your format, right? Um, I have a fluency disorder." And, and um, I'd like to discuss what alternative methods we can have. That's the only thing that you can do, right? Because there's nothing, there's nothing worse for anybody with a fluency disorder, whether it's a stutter or a lisp uh, or a cleft palate repair, um, anything like that, then the time is ticking, go. I mean, there's nothing worse than that. So when you're in an environment where you're, you're probably being evaluated on your ability to be succinct, right? And you want to be succinct, yeah, right? That's your intent, right? Uh, um, that 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 environment is is certainly the the DAC is stacked against you. So that's I think that's when, in advance of those circumstances, that's again when you share with the interviewer, hey, I, 
you know, I have a fluency disorder. So I either need more time than the system allows or another way to submit my responses. Don't you think that as someone who works in HR, don't you believe that companies and organizations, they should do something to also take into consideration people who have a, a fluency. A, of course, of course. Fluency disorder, because I feel like no one, no one even thinks about it. Just like I was saying before, all of these video, video formats where you have 30 seconds to read a question and you have two minutes to answer. If you like stutter, you, you just cannot do that. I think any organization, any modern organization, if somebody were to ask for that accommodation up front, you know, uh, they would certainly, again, do it for somebody hearing impaired. They would do it for somebody visually impaired. Um, they should do it for us. But we're, you know, right, we still have this unknown mystical thing called stuttering, right? People still don't, uh, they still don't, fully get it. I mean, ask people to list disabilities. They won't list us. I mean, ask people that are able to list them, right? And they'll say, oh, somebody can't walk. You know, they're in a wheelchair. They're blind. They're deaf. They're, they can't speak. They go boom, 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 boom. Uh, uh, um, and when you take it back to, and they, they realize what it is, right? And they realize that just because we are, um, better at it than others because we're successful with avoidance and substitution. Just like some people are amazing lip readers that are deaf, amazing, right? Um, and, uh, and some people aren't so good at it. So they still need to see the written word and they can't lip read, right? We all have varying degrees of our ability to, to get our hands around it, right? But it's employer's responsibility, right? It's my job as an HR professional to hire the best possible person, right? Um, regardless, right? Regardless of their disability, right? Whatever that disability is, right? Uh, uh, um, and um, so it's my responsibility as, as a, a good member of management to make sure that I make my interview process or my promotion process or my evaluation process, whatever that process is, it's my responsibility to make that um, as accessible as I can to everybody, right? So if somebody were to come to me and say, hey, Lou, um, I like your, I, I want to be at your presentation, but I'm visually impaired, right? Um, what can I have that, that, that can help me make sure I see your, you know, I get your point, right? Um, or I'm hearing impaired, or um, uh, I'm audibly impaired, right? What, whatever that case may be, I, of, I struggle with my speech. I want to present, right? I want to answer your questions. Um, I need an accommodation. Will you do it? Again, if there's a company that says, no, we're not going to do it. This is just the way it is. You don't want to work for them anyways. <laughs> you know, now in America, in, in the States, I'm not sure what your rules are, you know, in EU, but here that's illegal. You know, you have to, you know, you legally have to grant the accommodation as long as the law says it doesn't present an undue hardship on the organization. And that there's no undue hardship that it would present, right? Especially with big organizations like Facebook or Google or any of the big shows, right? So people are more than willing to bend over backwards to make sure that people have an opportunity to express their point. If somebody is going to reject you in a job um, because of your fluency disorder, you probably don't want to work for that person anymore. So, Lovis, thank you so okay, much thank for you taking so the time much. to this talk was to us today. It oh, was my pleasure. a pleasure. Really, really great to talk. And uh, I will be in touch soon. Thank you so much for, Fantastic. for giving us, you know, advices and tips on, on the professional side. It's really, like, important, especially for people who, who, like, who stutter, who are, like, struggling to get maybe a job or maybe they are just, like, sure. struggling to get promoted at work. So this is really great. Sure. Thank you so much for all of your insight. My pleasure. We'll be in touch. Sure. Thank you very much, Louise. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.